and welcome to Live With Art. This is the show where I get to speak to artists and creatives alike about their practice, their new ideas and any work um, that they've been working on. And it's kind of a really lovely platform and community on Instagram to be able to speak to artists and to have them connect with everyone. Instagram's an incredible platform. So that is what I'm doing here on Live With Art. You are very welcome. I am going to be speaking to... I have an incredible guest today. It's Kate Doherty, and I'm so excited to introduce you to her. As well as being phenomenally, phenomenally talented, Kate is also one of the loveliest people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. We're going to be talking about her exhibition at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. We're going to be talking about her new book. Uh, we're going to be talking about the various other projects that she has been a part of. I've got a whole list of things we can talk about. Um, so I am very, very excited to talk to Kate Doherty today. If you're just joining, welcome, welcome. This is Live With Art. I'm just going to untangle one of my headphones. Managed to get myself in a little bit of a... There we go. Perfect. Welcome, welcome to Live With Art. It's so nice to see people joining. Hello, welcome. As I just said, um, my name's Anna Gammons, and this is a really nice kind of Instagram series where I get to talk to creatives, artists um, alike about their practice, their new ideas, and introduce them to you guys listening. And of course, Instagram is a fantastic platform for that. So I am really, really looking forward to sharing my artist today, which is Kate Doherty. Um, I'm just gonna wait for her to join the chat. Uh, as you know, Instagram Live works by I start off the conversation, Kate's going to join me, and then we're going to talk to you guys about her work, and she's doing so much. You will not be bored hearing this conversation, there are so many things that she's up to, um, and I'm really excited to to talk to you about all of them. So, um, as I mentioned, there's a few people waving, hello, welcome to Live With Art, it is does what it says on the tin, it is live with artists and creatives, where I'm going to be speaking about their work. I can see Kate is on. Kate, let's have a go at adding you. Kate, press the little plus button. Come join. Fantastic. View request. Go live with Kate Doherty. Kate Doherty. Wait till she comes up. Hopefully she'll be with me in a second. Uh, here we go. Invite. Okay. There she is. Hello. Hello, Kate. How are you? Hello, Anna. It's very nice to see you. It is so it's lovely beautiful. to be talking Wonderful. to you. So do you. You're in your studio in London. Is that right? I'm in my studio. Hang on. I can say goodbye to my friend Elizabeth. One second, one second. <laughs> Bye, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is really like um uh yeah <laughs> this is what happens when we do live um sorry elizabeth sorry to cut you short <laughs> kate i'm so happy you're here you're in your studio in london right i believe yeah. it's uh notting hill around there yes fantastic i'm also in london too um very rare that kate is in the country at the moment because she's doing so much but welcome welcome home welcome back um, I've just been explaining that, um, Kate, you're not only a phenomenal artist, and we're going to talk about all of the incredible projects that you've been doing, of which there are many, but you're also one of the loveliest people that I have the pleasure of knowing. So you, you got a great intro. <laughs> That's good. As well as my friend Elizabeth leaving. <laughs> <laughs> as well as saying goodbye to Elizabeth. I'm glad she made it into the chat. Um, right, Kate, let's make, let's make a start. It's just turned four o'clock. Um, I obviously introduced you as an artist, but that's pretty vague. So can you tell the listeners in your own words your, about you and your practice? Um, I am a visual artist. I work across a variety of disciplines, um, including now sculpture, which is mm. really and um, uh, film and even uh, music and I've just done a sound installation at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. Uh, uh, we're doing lots of really exciting experiments with different materials um, and uh, but, but mainly I'm I like um, the natural world I suppose. My, my work is I suppose about uh, our man's relationship with the natural world and mm. how we can communicate with one another within it and how everything is connected in fact absolutely yeah. and i know that everything is connected as a wider project that you're doing with uh konstantin novozilov nobel prize winner konstantin novozilov who i also have the pleasure of knowing um a fantastic um accompaniment to you i'm sure <laughs> what was that sorry 
We did a great podcast together. We did. Well, we're going to talk about that. I'm very excited. There's so many things to cover. Um, <laughs> but I guess we'll start. We'll start from the beginning a, a bit more about Kate. I, I know. I know you started off working with language. That was one of the things that um, really interested you as an artist. Is that right? And and you work a lot with felt. You work a lot with everything. But I'd love the, the listeners to hear a bit more about your early practice. Uh, so I started off uh, writing um, on lots of different things. I started off, actually, I'm a, a really a failed writer. Really. <laughs> You're a failed nothing, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, um, I wrote a book and it was supposed to get published. And then um, that was on the Tuesday. And then on the Friday, they, the publishing house changed their mind. And I was so upset about it that literally I came out in boils on my forehead which oh my goodness me. i love this, this like dramatic event on my and um <laughs> and i didn't want to tell anyone what had happened so i wrote it on my clothes i cut out all these felt letters and wrote them uh, cut it out and wrote this story about what had happened with my book on my clothes and then when i went anywhere people would say oh what happened to your book and i'd say i can't talk about it but you can read it on my <laughs> you can literally see what happened to me yeah. oh my uh, god but- uh, and so I made a couple of uh, things like that. And then I was writing kind of all over my house because I just wanted to see something that I'd written, I think. <laughs> oh, gosh, there's something truly heartbreaking, but also really inspirational about that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really blushing. I can't believe I'm actually saying this. Oh, gosh. And, then, um, and so then, uh, yeah, and then from one thing to the other, I ended up having a little show in Paris which went very well and ended up doing costumes for um, totally randomly for um, Rufus Wainwright, for York, uh, different people, um, which came from, sorry, in fact, my artistic practice started when I was really small. I was really shy and I used to fill my pockets with uh, stones and pebbles and stuff that made me feel at home in myself. You see what I mean? Oh, you know? Yeah, I do. And knowing you, oh, that does not surprise me in a really lovely but, way. Yeah, so I've still got lots of um, uh, stuff in my pockets always, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then if I get bored or shy or, you know, something seems a bit overwhelming, I kind of rattle my stuff in my pockets, which is, which oh is really gosh. How heartwarming. I think we all need something to... to... Oh, take the edge off sometimes. I don't, I don't think that's unusual, but uh, you're just, just, you're just talking about it. So, hmm. All carrying bits and bobs around, bits of paper with mm. stuff on. And then I'd also undo the hems of my clothes and sew them into the hems of my clothes and things. Oh, which, my God. They were always, like, my stuff was always full of those, like, gnarled up bits of washed paper. <laughs> yeah, when you leave a tissue and you're in, in the washing and then it, yeah, nightmare. Like over, Impossible but... to get off. Um, I'm really glad you said that, Kate, because one of the things I really like talking about is also um, is failure, because I think we all see each other's successes and it can be really overwhelming. And to hear and to hear an incredibly established artist, a world famous artist like yourself. My life full of failure. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, it's not. But I but I understand. I think it's it's really, really lovely that you can talk about it. And I think it's important that you do, because we've all failed at many things in our lives and it's really nice that you can be honest about it and and also coming from someone so successful I think that's important to say so thank you for starting off with that um (laughs) now right we've done your failures we're going to do your successes um Kate has had many I in fact the first time I met Kate Dordie the first time I interviewed you um you were doing an exhibition at the Saatchi Gallery and it was all about it was uh, about the Tutankhamun exhibition and your experience with that um that was fantastic Thank you, Anna. But you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just very being good nice. Show. I really enjoyed making that show. It was, uh, I worked with all these really, really interesting people um, who it was really such an honour to, to work with. Um, Egyptologists and scholars and doctors. I even spent a day at the Hammersmith Hospital seeing heart transplants, which was um, totally mind-blowing. So beautiful. Yeah. And um, so I made a body of work about that. And um, and that really informed a lot of my work. Even now at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, there's a lot of Egyptian 
influence in my work. Um, and even one of the essays in the catalogue is going to be written by one of the Egyptologists from Oxford, who uh, I ended up being really good friends with because I'd write to her, you know, going, so what, what if I want to say this? You know, what would it look like and why? You know, and, then <laughs> and she's she, like, how do I condense this into... <laughs> And she even very kindly came to my show at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park and um, and was kind of going, oh, how interesting that you did it yellow. Ah, yes, and you know why, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. She's this fascinating um, scholar called Manon Schutz, who uh, I love people like you who are really passionate in, and enthusiastic. And Manon, I think you might have met Manon. I did, I did. She was wonderful. Um, yeah. And Manon, you know, she could talk for hours about, I don't know what, like sparrows in, each, in ancient Egypt. And she's doing her doctoral thesis on... Uh, beds and dreaming in the yes. ancient Egyptian world and yeah. you know I mean what could be more interesting than that it's just Absolutely. great but yeah. you do a fantastic job of, of funneling all that you have learned to know into these incredible projects one of which has just finished we've timed this slightly slightly poorly on my end uh just finished at the York Yorkshire Sculpture Park um, and yeah. Wonder Chaos this is a huge <laughs> exhibition you've taken over the whole of the sculpture park pretty much um, with this phenomenal exhibition. I know you did it in collaboration with Konstantin Novozolov, um, Nobel Prize winning, winning physicist, also um, a really, really lovely human being as, as just like yourself. Um, let's talk about it. How did it start? How was it? Talk me through the exhibition. Uh, so it started, um, well, thanks to the generosity of Yorkshire Sculpture Park, um, who are such amazing, uh, welcoming, wonderful place and really they um they put themselves out there for interesting new projects always and so it's such a great privilege to work with them all mm. um and uh so Kostya and I have been working on this um idea of chaos really as part of our everything is connected <clears throat> project and uh uh what were you drinking just then water vodka straight oh. vodka Oh, really? Just... Yeah, because it looked so cool. I thought it was like some amazing smoothie. <laughs> oh, God, no, no, no. Just just plain old water. Uh... <laughs> I need to keep myself, um, my palate hydrated. Oh, that's very good. The, <laughs> um, and so we, uh, we've been doing this project, Everything is Connected, for, I guess, like four years now. Yeah. Um, and it's partly a humanitarian project in a kind of abstract way because um, we both feel that Everything is Connected <clears throat> albeit through um, with completely different but joining perspectives so it's like we're coming from two very different places but we end up looking in the same direction so Kostya was always really laughing at me I loved it when I met Kostya um, for the first time because he um, uh, he was sort of reassuring me about my existential crisis after making this tent that I made this uh, project about home and identity <clears throat> where I went around and met um, uh, refugees and talked with them about home and identity. And at the end of that, I was so um, dazzled by the um, human race, really. Mm. I've always really liked uh, people, but at the end of that project, I, um, I loved people so much more. I, I had no idea people could be so wonderful. Mm. And so I... Um, I found that very moving. It was really a life-changing project. And I started, I, one of the conclusions of the tent was that our life is what our thoughts make it. Mm. And so me and my friend, Beth. <laughs> Shout out Beth. to Beth. Me and Elizabeth. Friend, <laughs> oh, we decided that we were going to go around and look at um, look for the truth in science. Mm -hmm. So we went to the um, uh, CERN to to see the large uh, to the to see the particle collider. Yeah, we went down to the seed bank in Sussex. We started kind of planning to do you know night courses in mathematics and I don't know what. And then um, because maths and science is very reassuring, you know, if our life is what our thoughts make it there must be some truth somewhere that you can actually count on. and Some concrete thoughts. Yeah, something that sure. is actually 
true at the end of it all, which I have to say, um, <laughs> Kostya did not reassure me. <laughs> I was going to say, Kostya, as a as a, a, a noble scientist, presumably deals in facts, and you presumably, as an artist, don't. So yeah. I imagine the two of those combined. But actually, I think knowing the both of you, that's actually not maybe the case. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Kostya, who's actually really. Uh, a sort of philosopher really and uh, and uh, and an artist mm -hmm. um, as well as a scientist of course it, ha it happens that his medium is science maybe um, uh, although now his medium is also um, uh, like formally art I suppose but right. uh, uh, but he uh, he is very very unreassuring so you can <laughs> you can stay up all night talking with Kostya and his family about you know what's it all for and yeah. uh and you end up with you know looking at different formulae and things which end mm. up being in the wonder chaos show by the way mm -hmm. um there's masses and masses of mathematics and uh, numbers in this exhibition but but at the end of every number and formula is um doubt <laughs> yeah so that's, uh, that's, that, was, that, was, that was disappointing. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, doubt and more questions. And so, yeah. Then we started to have the COVID. And then, so we were just chatting all the time because we found each other quite reassuring. So mm -hmm. we would have a, a phone appointment and we'd just talk about stuff because yeah. um, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And then we decided that we'd make a podcast with you. <laughs> what a wonderful experience that was as well. What I got to hear firsthand all of the doubt that Costa had and actually really all the reassurance that Kate had, ironically. <laughs> yeah, really, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so we did that. And then we, um, we thought, oh, we should do an exhibition. And so we were offered an exhibition in Russia. And then... <laughs> I mean, God, I'm so boring. By the way, I'm this so boring. Not boring. And my voice is so boring. You're not boring. Your voice is not boring. But I am funny. It's very boring. funny that you said that live I on it. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm like a bee in a jar, you know, I'm like, get that woman out of here. And then... Um, <laughs> uh, so you do not sound boring at all. I, I'm really <laughs> hoping everyone's enjoying this as much as I am, because Kate's life is incredibly fascinating to everyone, apparently, but herself. So, <laughs> so then... So then we, um, uh, so then I wrote to Claire and said, what I'm doing at the moment is this show that's going to Russia. And, um, and how about, could we have a kind of step stopover show at mm. the York Scotch Park? Mm. And she said, yes. So that was that. So then we worked, uh, we had a kind of intermediary goal as it were mm. on our way to Russia, which, mm. um, which ended up being this fantastically fun interesting mm. great show at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park which has just closed so I'm not even um trying to get people to come <laughs> I know again that that yeah. I can be blamed for that really really <laughs> poor timing on my end um but I know the show really fits into as as you said very well yourself this idea that um firstly wonder chaos is the name um the idea that everything is kind of chaotic but at the same time there is beauty in the natural world and there's beauty in everything <clears throat> and of course the overarching theme that we are all connected as well which uh, having just gone through the pandemic is quite a reassuring concept um, so tell me, because I know that you started this exhibition learning an abundance of new skills. So how did you approach the exhibition and, and, and how did you find having to learn all these new things, all these new ways of creating? Oh, it was really, um, it was, it was really fun. Firstly, this show is, um, uh, named in an interesting way because somebody said to me, I think it was even yesterday, they said, so funny that you call your show, um, a wonder chaos when it's all about your love of order and harmony <laughs> I was like, oh. wow <laughs> it always kind of uh, comes through a bit uh, like that um the um uh, how did we start we started with uh, i can't actually remember now but one of the things that we did that that was quite a lot of work was um uh, uh, getting an idea to create an alternative random number generator um, through painting numbers on the sides of a flock of sheep. So um, we uh, there's a uh, in mathematics and science there's there's a there's a very 
major requirement, which yeah. is to have new random numbers. It's used for coding, for cryptography, for all stuff to do with technology, basically. Mm. And even for predicting the weather. And uh, so there's an institute in America called the um, Random, and it's called the Random Number Institute. <laughs> it's called the Beacon Institute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Beacon Institute uh, issues with a whole load of, you know, uh, blokes who've got PhDs and things. It issues a new random number every two seconds. Um, mm -hmm. And it's incredibly difficult for people to issue, uh, to, to create a random number because actually people don't naturally create things that are completely random. We, we are kind of programmed to create things based on what we know and what we have experience on. So it's very complicated to create these random numbers. And then um, uh, I'm very influenced at the moment by the work of John Cage, who uh, looks a lot at um, a causality and um, chance and, um, and I suppose how nothing is connected really. Mm. Um, and he, as you know, of course, worked a lot with silence and uh, the void really and um, and and playing around with dice and consulting the I Ching and all that. And um... oh, we've lost your sound, Kate. I think. Oh, Kate, I can't hear you. I don't know whether that's just my end or your end. Hopefully. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're back. <laughs> um, sorry, you were saying about John Cage, and yeah. So we created um, an alternative random number generator by, um, by... You've gone again, Kate, you've gone again. <laughs> Your sound's off again. Oh, you're back, you're back, you're back. I don't know, I don't know why it keeps cutting out like that. Yeah, yeah. it's fine now, <clears throat> great now. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. You've gone again. <laughs> Sorry. Now, you, now you're back, now you're back. Is it Wi-Fi? Is it is it that is often often the case? No, it's because my lovely oh. son is trying to call me. Oh, that there you go, there you go. Do you need to go? You can, you no, can no. attend to your child. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> okay. No problem, no problem. You're back. back. And um, <laughs> and so yeah, so this this sheep thing um has turned out to to be um of such interest to the scientific community because there are so many more random numbers created by these sheep than by the random number generator mm. that uh, within a month of the exhibition at the yorkshire sculpture park they will have created more random numbers than there are atoms in this universe and so <laughs> yeah because Good they're God. Sheep are wandering around randomly and also you can see them randomly so it anyway they've sent me all of the formulae and it just does your head in so now there's this russian scientific institute that's sending a film crew and we're going to start um we're going to make a film next week which will be shown in a loop for six months in a oh museum in moscow um, so that all the scientists can come and look at this random number generator. <laughs> it's really funny, no? This is, in this is incredible. Kate, yeah, it's funny, yeah. oh my gosh, Especially you're now I teaching scientists. Did you think you'd be teaching scientists when <laughs> you did this? And especially, I actually can't count to the point where um, we were doing a code. Uh, we were trying to create a coded uh, system for creating a blanket with these ladies in Syria. Yeah. And I wrote very proudly to Kostya and said, um, yes, I've given a number to each, uh, to each digit. And so we'll have, if we do 10 of each digit, then we'll have 900 squares and that would be great. And so Kostya called me and said, yes, but this is, he said, how interesting that you chose not to include zero, you know. Um... <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Did you did you have a reason why? You know, I was like, uh, no. But of course, he's so used to dealing with interesting people that he thought that I was doing something really interesting by leaving zero out. And it's just... Oh, I like that. Yeah. He's a creative thinker, though, as well, Kostya. So I yeah. imagine that he was thinking, right, what's the cause of this? Because it can't just be bad math. So there must be something, <laughs> a creative... <laughs> 
structure to this yeah. argument. And always, like a lot of very intelligent, kind people, always presumes that the other person is saying something very, very interesting that they haven't quite understood. <laughs> right, right, right. He's it's very not... humble as well for somebody so smart. Very, very yeah. humble. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Fantastic. Though. That's, a, that's incredible. I, I, um, a random generator with sheep. I mean... Yeah. If that's not a title for something, I don't know. I don't know what is. Um, and, and with that, we made a film, which was also made with the intervention of the sheep with the numbers on the side. So we put thirty-six films relating to pertaining to um, harmony and chaos um, in a bin, in a kind of Dropbox bin. Mm. Then the editor gave assigned to each one a number, right. and then we read the number we read random numbers off the sides of the flock of sheep, which predicted the order in which the film would be edited. And so we created a kind of surrealist film. And then I made a graphic score and this amazing singer called Sarah Gabriel sang notes from the graphic score. And then we, as we, we created a piece of music with her um, uh, oh that, uh, that accompanies this surrealistic film, I suppose. Um, Fantastic. We did so many things. Why well, oh. know there's, there's language, there's, there's things on trees, that you've, you've written things that you also oh, welded. Yeah. I want to hear about the fact that you learned to weld to do this <laughs> exhibition, which I love the idea of you welding. <laughs> yeah, I'm really strong now. I have a really, really strong right arm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like um, a little old lady on one side and like sort of Popeye on the other. So, um, uh, yes, so I was very, uh, very fortunate to be given the opportunity to start working with steel. And so I made my first large scale outdoor sculpture, which is 3.2 meters tall. It's a portal. It's I'm so proud of it. When I first saw it, I cried. <laughs> I was oh, so, bless you. so pleased when it was first installed. And um, I'm not surprised. You know, that, that's really a great, uh, a, a great um, achievement. It's funny because I've always felt like um, I'm so fortunate that, um, but just I'm just very lucky, you know. So people sort of say, "Oh, look, you know, you've got I can't think what nice children or something." You know? so, yeah, but that's just you know sent to me that I didn't really do much to have such lovely children, for example, or you know uh, I can't think what whatever other thing. But uh, but this sculpture, really, I did it. Like, <laughs> that's a, there was uh, yeah. there was no luck involved. <laughs> it was really. Awesome. I will jump in there and say that I think people create their own luck, Kate. And I think <laughs> that you good things happen to good people. So, um, I, but I completely understand what you're saying. You you quite literally create like from nothing. Made yeah. learned how to do it. Yeah. Made the sculpture, presented it to the world. I think that that's um, what an you achievement. Can... And it's such a fascinating material, steel, because you get these enormous sheets of steel mm. and then you get this kind of, it's, um, what's it like? How big is it? It's like this big thing mm. at the end, it's got a, a tip that's 2,200 degrees centigrade. <laughs> and, then you, Goodness. You, uh, and then you, you know, melt your um, shape out of it. Oh my then, gosh. It was just, it was really uh, an exercise in um, uh, overcoming, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what it would be, overcoming anxiety, I suppose. Yeah, uh, I suppose so. Or, or just learning things, right? Learning yeah. skills and, and... Humility, definitely. And then you have to wear all these great, you have to get all these outfits and, uh, you know, the welding is actually quite frightening. Um, and you sure. you have to wear this sort of huge visor and gloves that sort of... Um, it's just such a fascinating material, metal, you know. Yeah. It's really wonderful. And then at night, I was staying in this cottage in the middle of, the, in the middle of nowhere. And I'd go home and read about sort of Vulcan and Thor and all of these kind of, you know, ancient people living in forges and everything. It was great. What an experience. What an yeah, experience. Really, I feel so lucky. And that was all with the thanks to this, this great welder and blacksmith artist called George Fell. He was just great. We'd sit and eat uh, pork pies together at lunch and... Kind of. Oh, how very, how very Yorkshire of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Having studied in York, I know how important a pork pie is to everyone. 
uh, and now myself, of course. Um, Kate, it sounds like you you did so much of this. Obviously, you did so much of this exhibition yourself, but it is a wonderment because you did so many things um, mm. that you could do it all yourself. And I know you you saw every single project through because some people have people they have to do the work, but you actually did everything yourself. Um, yeah. That must have taken. How yeah. long was this project in the pipeline for? Um, about probably nearly a year yeah oh but God. so many people helped I mean it looks like I, I it looks like me and Kostya did everything but we just had such wonderful people helping us you know all the people at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park mm. my friend Catherine took these amazing photographs you know Louise mm. was amazing I mean you know there's just so many amazing people we made yeah. an NFT with this incredible team of um, people from across the world that's coming out in a couple of weeks we made we made a map that makes no sense. <laughs> the, How, uh, what's the word? There's a word for that. Oh, I can't remember. A map that doesn't make sense is uh, yeah, it's like oxymoron. Alice. So we made a map of all of the installations around the park because there were like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 of them. Right. And we, um, uh, we were going to make a real map. And then we thought, no, we have to make a chaotic map. And so it has, <laughs> the, this map means that some, like lots of people came to the show and mm. like even the sponsor came to the show and couldn't find a lot of the artworks because there was no way to find them unless it was by chance. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that's so you. We were really pleased with that as well. We thought that was great. We were... I really like that. That's, a, that's an excellent touch. Um, an artwork within an artwork that is interactive as well now. Um, mm -hmm. As I'm sure most, most of you, a lot of your work is interactive. For, tho for those of you that have just joined, welcome. Um, this is Live With Art. I'm Anna Gammons. I'm speaking to artist Kate Doherty, who has so many wonderful things going on. Um, not least of which is an exhibition that just finished at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park called Wonder Chaos with uh, Konstantin Novozolov. That's what we've been chatting about. Um, what was Konstantin and your reaction to the exhibition once everyone was seeing it? That must have been pretty surreal. Oh, we were just so happy. Uh, Kostya was still unfortunately in Singapore because mm. um, he's he's working now in an institute in Singapore. Um, mm. So he, we were trying to kind of keep him involved, um, mm. uh, but it was pretty um, it was it was pretty sad actually because everybody loved this show so much mm. and we were all so happy and he was just in this office in Singapore kind of going, <laughs> yay! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, very bad for him so it'll be nice when the show opens in 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 Moscow and he can actually yeah. be there you know yeah I was gonna say will he be able to you know originally from yeah. Russia he'll be able to see that fantastic yeah so um so he he said also it, it's very sweet because he and his family get along really well and so they decided <laughs> they were <laughs> that they were going to uh, leave the country for Christmas right. um, because they quite like being locked in for three weeks um, because they really, really enjoyed the last um, quarantine that they had. To oh, do. my. You know what? I haven't heard that yeah. story before. That's a really nice. That's nice to hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Families it's getting lovely. on and locked in yeah. together. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. Well, he's got two. Okay. He's, you know, he's got two lovely children and, and his. Yeah, I'm not surprised they get on. What a lovely family. Yeah, yeah, really mm -hmm. lovely family. What? When is this? When? So when is this going on the road? When is this Yorkshire Sculpture Park exhibition Wonder Chaos traveling round? Where can people see it? When? When will it be um, abroad? What are the What are the dates for that? Or not necessarily dates, but rough ideas. Um, there's uh, two films that um, gigantic films that will be seen in Moscow in. Um, November uh, there's other parts going to other places that I am not at the liberty to say Ooh, okay <laughs> no problem no problem I'll do it exclusive um, when the time comes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and same with the other things so yeah it's all a bit um, mm -hmm. uh, um, but anyway there will be a, a very very big uh, Wonder Chaos show uh, soon Excellent. and there's three incarnations of this particular Wonder Chaos uh, mm -hmm. show that will be travelling around Russia so there'll be three incarnations of it before Christmas which is um, which is great That's because okay. there's different bits of the show that are going to travel mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, including the lovely tree that 
sounds with the chimes you haven't seen it of course this is i haven't i've seen i've seen only images i was i was away when i was supposed to be um supposed to be seeing this exhibition so i'm delighted that it's going to be traveling so i can see it and um no sheep you're not transporting any sheep to uh to moscow <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that definitely be not oh yeah. my gosh well i mean this is one of the this is one of the most recent projects that Kate's been working on. Kate, I know that you have, throughout lockdown, you were incredibly busy as well. Um, you wrote a book uh, called I Knew yeah. You Would Come Back to Me, which had a beautiful launch at Loro Piana um, yes. in London, which was fantastic. Can you talk us through that book? Because it has some really interesting parallels to the work you're doing with Wonder Chaos and also our own experience of lockdown. So... Um just at the beginning of lockdown um this friend of mine Catherine gave me a book this beautiful beautiful book um called the law of light and i read it again and again and again <clears throat> all the way through lockdown and um and it really informed my existence and i just lost a close member of my family and was thinking a lot about um life and death and da -da, and um and found thanks to thanks to friendship and 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 love uh from my friends and family and these wonderful books um that for me the the covid was yeah, one of the happiest times of my life because you didn't have to tell people that you didn't want to see them, which is a lot of my time on the telephone. <laughs> so, that is true, yeah. Oh, we, we all had a universal excuse for social plans. That is very true. Yeah, so it was so nice. Like, no one, I mean, only a few people uh, rang who, who, you know, we really loved and... Uh, and uh, and I found it to be the most peaceful, wonderful experience. And um, and so this book is a book about the everyday sublime, really, and uh, and about my uh, my faith in the broadest sense, you know, as in well, a bit like everything is connected, a bit like all of my work. That um, uh, the wonders of nature and people around us, and you know, of course, it's not just sort of like rose tinted glasses, but but I do, I do think that we live in such a beautiful, beautiful world full of things to learn and uh, find out about. Okay. So a lot of my work is, 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 about, is about that. Um, and I think, Kate, you have a natural ability to make the ordinary extraordinary. That's something that I found about you and your work, um, as I have known you. So, um, and I, you know... This book was, is, is wonderful. It's a really nice um, right. tribute yeah. to your experience. Uh, no, no problem. I'm not, I'm not just being nice. Um, it's a really nice tribute to your experience and to the pandemic. And also, I think, as I said, poses some really nice parallels with our, our kind of universal mindset, which was that this is obviously an awful situation, but the sort of ordinary did become extraordinary. That, that one walk a day we yeah. got became the most beautiful time of the day. And the things yeah. we surrounded by were the only things we could see that day. So um, I think we all tried at least to find something extraordinary in the ordinary. And I think your book really is a nice um, metaphor for that Thank concept. You. So a huge congratulations. You wrote a book. You wrote a book. Second book. Your second book. Well, I made... I wrote a little essay and there were two very beautiful essays written by, uh, by, by very interesting people. So I think that's probably the sort of main merit of the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned as well at the beginning, and I know um, uh, this, this tent project, which was um, my brother, am I my brother's keeper? I believe mm -hmm. is the title. Um, mm -hmm. What's going on with that? Because the last time we spoke, uh, it was traveling around entering the curriculum in Spain, I believe. <laughs> yes. Which is very surprising, which means that now uh, I, uh, I'm invited to all these cities in Spain when my tent is invited to practically every city in Spain. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, well, it seems, uh, I don't know how many cities there are, but it's definitely been to 14 or 15. Now I'm going oh. to, the next place it's going to is Santander um, in December. Awesome um and then presumably it'll go to a whole load of other places in spain mm -hmm. i've also got another show in spain in june um which will be at the fundacion calixa in granada which i'm doing with uh the Lorca institute 
um, with the niece of um, Federico Garcia Lorca, who's my favorite poet, um, who's going to help us uh, to make this uh, beautiful body of work about, well, I suppose, about how everything is connected. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really yeah. handy to have this, this running theme, though, because... Um, as yeah. I said, it, and it makes sense that all your exhibitions and your work is connected to this theme, yeah. which is everything is connected. It's a, it's true. It's a theme <laughs> in a theme, um, which is, yeah, yeah a, really, a really lovely concept as well. And um, Kate, as I've known her, has convinced me that this is in fact true, uh, <laughs> as if I needed much convincing. But, um, but yeah, so, so what else is next for you, Kate? You've got so many things going on. Your book yeah. came out, just finished your exhibition. You know, yeah. there's your, your, your traveling show in Spain. Um, what else is next? Uh, so I've got an exhibition in Berlin in the spring, in uh, Granada in the spring. Um, I've got another um, another exhibition uh, well, that's going to travel all around the world, which I can't tell you about because it's signed an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> Do not, don't break your NDA live. That is, that's not a good place to start. I'm not going to break, I'm not going to. <laughs> um, Fantastic though. That's that's a very very exciting. Um... Oh, Kate, we've lost you again. Sound is your son calling you? <laughs> oh, we'll be yeah, you're back. Right. You're back. Kate, you've gone again. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wait, hang on. Oh no, you're there. You're 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 there. Okay, that's odd. Um... You're, you're back. You're back. You're back. So, so that'll be good. And then I have an exhibition in Oxford. Just lots and lots of things. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. Well, okay. I'm going to tell you all where you need to go to look at what Kate's up to. Um, for those of you who have just joined um, or are watching the end of this, um, I'm speaking to artist Kate Doherty, who's doing a million very exciting projects. She also happens to be one of the most wonderful people that I've ever met, um, which <laughs> always helps when you're trying to, you know, when we're having this conversation. Um, where can people go to find out about you and your work and what you're up to and the best place to follow what you're up to? I have an updated website, amazingly, um, which is my name, which is <laughs> katenordy.com. And then there's, uh, there's stuff, yeah, that'll come up on the different museum mm -hmm. websites, I guess. Mm -hmm. as it along. Google Kate Daudy, and that is K-A-T-E-D-A-U-D-Y. Yes, that's probably the best way to find out because it's all kind of going on in a lot of different directions, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have an Instagram, which is done by yes. my assistant, Ella, who's very good at it. So that means that at last, there are some Instagram posts that aren't about like me in Barnsley Hospital with a, with a splinter in my eye. <laughs> oh gosh. We're just, are we just keeping it to art? No, no personal? Yeah, yeah. She's just keeping Fine. it to art. Which is fantastic. We're well, thank you, Ella, for keeping us. Life <laughs> <off the air. laughs> Well, thank you, Ella. It sounds like you're doing a very good job. And I know you are, in fact, because I've seen your Instagram and you are doing a very good job. Um, oh, someone's very, Ella's very kindly put wonderchaos.org on our chat. Ella, thank ah. you very much for doing that. She is, she is on it. Good job, she Ella. She is on it. Hello, Ella. Um, <laughs> fantastic so of course you did just finish this wonder chaos exhibition um at the yorkshire sculpture park so you can't go and see it there but it is going to be a rounded about sorry kate what were you you can still go and see the tree that said there's one of the installations which is called all you had to do was stay which mm -hmm. has been invited to stay um for the foreseeable future which is such an honor and joy for for us and so uh if you want to see the sound installation and sculpture all you had to do was stay it's it's still up at the yorkshire sculpture park for as for as long as it doesn't fall off <laughs> Which... <laughs> i've seen i've seen videos of this this is a really beautiful um exhibition again not live in person but now that it's staying i can see it so that is really good yes you can me. um mm. and i know that it's it's sort of wind chimes and it's this beautiful concept of um all you had to do is stay which is well i'm very excited to see that and i'm very excited to see which we can't speak about yet, but where your exhibition is going to be um, around the UK and further afield as well. Um, mm -hmm. It goes without saying, Kate, that um, you're very talented. I'm so pleased you spoke to me today um, and a huge no, congratulations. thank you. It's such a pleasure to see you again. Such we, a pleasure. 
uh, yeah, we, we got to really like each other doing that podcast. <laughs> and it's so nice to see you happy and well at the oh, end of the COVID. <laughs> I know, I know. I, it's every, you know, we made it through. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's lovely to see everyone socializing and being around each other again, um, you know, uh, which is really, really nice. Yes, the podcast, the podcast, of course, um, which is up on um, around and about on all the places that you get podcasts. It's called Wonder Chaos. Um, Kate invited me uh, to help with the production and the presenting of the podcast, which is a really lovely conversation between her and uh, Kostya or Konstantin Novozolov, uh, the award winning Nobel Prize winning physicist. Uh, and it's a really, really lovely insight into the way that they both think um, the kind of influence of science versus art and actually surprising takes on both those subjects, which was an absolute pleasure to, uh, to be a part of that with you both. Um, and of course, it's part of the exhibition too, which is a privilege for me. So thank you very much uh, for that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, you can see that all over the place on Bloomberg and um, YSP okay. and okay. everywhere. And really congratulations, Anna, because you are such a great interviewer and uh, really interesting <laughs> and clever person to talk to. Um, so oh, I'm good at stopping me and Kostya from rambling. <laughs> <laughs> no no rambling no stopping needed uh, every word was was fascinating and i really hope that you listening um had some insight into kate's work if you didn't know about her before you sure do now um go and follow what she's up to and uh, and yeah you won't regret it every piece of what she does is really meaningful so it's an experience that i'm glad i've had and now i can share with you all so kate thank you and have thank a you. very lovely weekend um thank i will I will, I will I will say goodbye to everyone now. Thank you for listening to Live With Art. It's been a pleasure. My name's Anna Gammons. This has been Kate Doherty. Uh, you can obviously see this video. Um, it will be live on the IG series stream Live With Art. Um, you can see it after it's obviously live. And please do watch it. Please do leave your comments. And thank you for listening. I will be back in two weeks to speak to you again. Thank you. And goodbye. Bye, Anna. <laughs> Bye, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>